This episode of CHS Pride TV is brought to you by the generous support of Columbia Power and Water, dedication and commitment to safer power and a better community. Hi, welcome to the first edition for Pride TV for 2022. I'm Nathan. And I'm Kamaria. And I'm Kinsey. And I'm Amaya. You probably noticed more jumping in the hall than usual. It turns out that it was for a great cause. We spoke with student council sponsor, Ms. Witherow, to find more. Students came out coming home week to see how high they could jump on the wall. How high did you jump? <laughs> The jump competition came up because student council wanted to have a class competition that didn't involve a whole lot of work. And I mean, it's basketball, so how high can you jump just sort of made sense. And of course, going with class competition tradition, seniors versus freshmen versus sophomores versus juniors, who can jump the highest? I couldn't believe how high some of these kids were able to jump. It was pretty cool. It looks like no last name Kamaya for the sophomores was able to jump the highest. For the seniors is going to be Tay Coffer. For the juniors, Desmond Dobbing. For the freshmen is going to be Chris Cathy. So congratulations, you guys earned extra points for your classes. That was a lot of fun and a great way to show some love to our community. Speaking of love, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. We went around school to share some Valentine's Day gifts with teachers and classmates. Yesterday. Uh, are you the one who gave me that card? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're about to go put these uh, cards on teachers' doors. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Basketball season is winding down, and CHS has had a great year. Coming home is a fun way to support our teams who work hard to compete and be successful on the court. When we could be 
superstars. We've been rather wrecking cars. April is that jambo? What is that stage for us? Kicking up. I'm Anaya Holly and I'm here with Coach Moore. Um, so when is Coming Home and who do y'all play? Well, Coming Home was supposed to be last Friday, but then we weren't in school, so then it got changed, and then with all the snow days. But we do have Senior Night coming up February 4th, but then as far as Coming Home, uh, not quite sure just yet. And what adversities has your team faced, and how do y'all deal with it? Well, we've definitely played one of the hardest schedules in the state. Um, we are extremely quick um, but we are lacking height in comparison to a lot of the teams that we play um, but going into the rest of district we have a good game plan together so hopefully like we'll overcome that. And how confident are you in the Lady Lions this season? Oh 100 percent the amount of work that they put in they're coming in on the weekends um, the amount of film that they watched um, I don't think I've ever been a part of a team that puts in the work the way that these kids do. So I know that as long as we keep pushing forward, then we're going to be successful. And what approach do you take when your team is struggling? Um, well, we usually go back to statistics and data, but then it's also reminding them that they're a strong group of women and they're supposed to be together and they're a team. And they came up with the saying at the beginning of the season, always us, never them. And so that was that's our reminding factor of to go back to, OK, we do us, don't worry about them. Um, and then we come back together. And do you feel like the team has progressed since the beginning of the season? Absolutely. Considering that I didn't even get them until November and pretty much every other team that we've played has been together at least a summer or if not a year or two or who knows however many before that. Um, the fact that we've only been practicing together for two and a half months, um, the fact that they've come in, they've put in the work, they're bought into the culture and what we're trying to do. Hi, I'm Anaya Mulholland and I'm here with Coach Campbell. Do you feel like the Lions have progressed since the beginning of the season? Yes, I do. I feel like uh, this start of this basketball season we had a lot of guys that were playing football and we've continued to get into a groove since basketball season started um, just trying to get back into a routine now and what adversities have the team faced and how have y'all deal dealt with it um, we've had a lot of adversity as far as uh, you know some injuries that have happened just the uh, weather that has happened then COVID uh, so we've had a lot of different things that have happened this year that has helped us uh, overcome adversity on the court and what's your level of confidence in the team this year uh, pretty good so far, uh, but we got to continue to get better. We've got a big district game coming up tomorrow with Independence, and we got to just continue to get better each day. We could have been superstars. Remember when we were jacking cars? Now it's not safe for you. You switch like. Congratulations to both of our basketball teams for their great season, and good luck for their postseason. Let's get back to Valentine's Day. One fantastic gift that everyone loves is something sweet. Here's a fun and easy recipe that you can make for your sweetie. Hey guys, do y'all need a tasty treat for your boo? Well, we've got you. Today we're gonna be making Valentine's Day cake balls. First you need red velvet cake mix. Then you need three eggs, cream cheese icing, vegetable oil, melting chocolate, Valentine's sprinkles, food dye, and cookie icing. First you're gonna add in your cake mix. Next you're gonna crack three eggs. Then add one and a fourth cup of water and a half cup of vegetable oil. Now mix it all together. Now you're going to spray two 8x8 pans. Now you're going to pour your batter equally into two pans. After your cakes are done, you're going to let them refrigerate for 30 minutes. After that, you're going to dump them in a bowl. Next, you're going to throw in your icing. Now you're going to refrigerate them for 30 minutes. Now you're going to start melting your chocolate. Once your chocolate's done and melted, you're going to take your balls out of the freezer. And you're going to start dipping them into the chocolate. And 
that's it on how to make cake balls. Make sure to support culinary and buy some of their goodies on Valentine's Day. Bye, Lions! Those were as delicious as they looked. Be sure to try making them yourself. With the new year comes new movies and games. Let's preview two upcoming movies and two highly anticipated games that are coming out soon. What's up, Pod TV? My name is Cannon Bailey, and uh, I am doing a review on the trailer Batman. Uh, the trailer is um, it's pretty good, but I mean, I think it did it better on Catwoman and you know the beginning of the movie or the beginning of the trailer. But and that's cool. Like, I think it's cool how they try they all try to turn on Batman, and try to kill him, and all that, and he just wasn't going. So I, I think that's cool. I think it's cool. Hey, uh, this is Nathan, and today I'll be reviewing uh, the Uncharted movie, I guess, that's coming out. Um, I've already watched the trailer, so, yeah, but, um, from my opinion, it looks pretty cool. I mean, they've taken a lot of things from the games, uh, that's what the ba movie's based on. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it looks cool. Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg look like they work good together, I guess. Um, and yeah, and that's my take on uh, Uncharted the movie. Comes out like February 18th. Go see it. My name is Detrevion. I will be talking about the up and coming game God of War Ragnarok. From the trailer footage, it looks like a very fun combat oriented game uh, with stories sprinkled throughout the the trailer story seems like it picks up right after the last game where that ended off uh no it, there is no set release date but it's said to come out mid 2022 like july or something and yeah, yeah this looks fun that's all i gotta say Releasing February 4th, Dying Light 2 will take place 15 years after the events of the first game. With the mass spread of the zombie virus from the first game, civilization has reverted back to the Dark Ages, with one of the last known civilizations only referred to as a city. Dying Light 2 will feature a new protagonist, Aiden Caldwell. Aiden is traveling to the city in hopes of finding a cure and looking for his missing sister. With, Techland, with the developer Techland recently confirming it takes over 500 hours to 100% complete the game, gamers are more excited than ever to jump back into the world of Dying Light. Watching those game trailers made us want to grab some controllers and start playing. We did just that with our own Brawlhalla tournament. Check it out.
That's all we have for this month. We'll see you next time on Pride TV. Bye! Bye.